They say facts are stubborn things. But who are they exactly? Think about it. Here's the thing we know. Russia tried to meddle in the 2016 election through a wide-ranging strategy of misinformation and persuasion. They did this because they wanted Donald Trump to win, because they believed Trump would be better for their long-term interests than would Hillary Clinton. Now, how do I know all of those facts? Because the American intelligence community unanimously confirmed all of them in early 2017. And the report by special counsel Robert Mueller, remember him? Confirmed the depths of Russia's meddling on behalf of Trump. So did the Senate Intelligence Committee, which not for nothing was led by a Republican senator named Richard Burr. So here's a summary. Everyone who knows agrees that Russia interfered in 2016 to help Trump and hurt Clinton. Those facts make it hard to understand the latest conspiracy theory embraced by President Donald Trump and several other high profile Republican lawmakers. Now let's start here. Trump, as well as Devin Nunes, the highest ranking Republican on the House Intelligence Committee and Louisiana Republican Senator John Kennedy, all seem to believe that it was actually Ukraine that meddled in the last presidential election to help Clinton and hurt Trump. It's a flip flop. Ukraine, under this theory, actually framed Russia to make it look like Russia was the country doing the meddling. See, it's wheels within wheels. Now, the evidence Trump and his GOP allies offer up to substantiate these false claims is, well, a melange of half-truths and no-truths. Here's a bunch of just those summed up in a single Donald Trump comment on Fox News this fall. Congrats. Uh, a lot of it had to do, they say, with Ukraine. M but, Mr. You know, President. It's very interesting. It's very interesting. They have the server, right, from the DNC, Democratic National Committee. Who has the server? Now, the FBI went in and they told him, get out of here. You're not kidding. We're not giving it to you. They gave the server to CrowdStrike or whatever it's called, which is a country, which is a company owned by a very wealthy Ukrainian. And I still want to see that server. You know, the FBI has never gotten that server. That's a big part of this whole thing. Why did they give it to a Ukrainian company? Now, there is uh, zero evidence that the Ukrainians have the DNC server that the Russians hacked in 2016. You'll remember that emails from that server were released on WikiLeaks website in hopes of damaging Clinton's campaign. And no, the DNC didn't tell the FBI, get out of here, you're not getting it. In fact, the FBI obtained copies of forensic images made by CrowdStrike, a well-known online security company, which had imaged the DNC server, a fancy word for saying they had created a digital copy of everything that was on it. Now, speaking of CrowdStrike, it is not, as Donald Trump has contended, owned by a very wealthy Ukrainian. The company was started by a man named Dmitry Alperovich, who was born in Russia and is now an American citizen. And one more for good measure, CrowdStrike isn't a Ukrainian company. It's based in Sunnyville, California, which is one of the 50 United States. And as the Washington Post fact checker notes, CrowdStrike is even traded on the NASDAQ. So then literally everything Trump said in that quote is wrong. So some Republicans are willing to admit that Ukraine wasn't secretly behind the DNC server hack, but that doesn't mean they're willing to give up on the conspiracy theory that Ukraine meddled in the 2016 election too. John Kennedy, not that John Kennedy, during an appearance on Meet the Press in early December laid out his thinking thusly. I think both Russia and Ukraine meddled in the 2016 election. I think it's been well documented in the Financial Times, in Politico, in The Economist, in The Washington Examiner, even on CBS, that the uh, Prime Minister of Ukraine, the Interior Minister, the Ukrainian Ambassador to the United States, the head of the Ukrainian Anti-Corruption uh, um, League, uh, all meddled in the election on social media and otherwise. So the articles Kennedy points to make clear that there were absolutely some powerful people in Ukraine who didn't like Donald Trump and would have preferred Hillary Clinton win in 2016. Sidebar, much of the Ukraine criticism was based on Trump's dismissive attitude to Russia's seizure of Crimea and sidebar. But if a foreign official or even foreign officials making disparaging comments about the prospect of a Trump presidency means their country was interfering in the election, then well, a whole lot of countries interfered in the 2016 election. Look, it's pretty clear what's happening here. We're comparing apples 
and oranges. Why is it apples and oranges? Apples and bananas. On one side, we have Russia engaging in a multi-pronged coordinated disinformation effort to influence the American election, an effort that led to the indictments of 12 Russian military intelligence agency members by that guy, Bob Mueller. On the other side, we have a handful of Ukrainian officials offering negative comments about Donald Trump in op-eds and their personal Facebook posts. So then, what Russia did in 2016 isn't in the same universe as a few Ukrainians offering critiques of Trump. And it's not really even close. Say it with me. Russia meddled in the 2016 election. Ukraine did not. See, that wasn't too hard. And that is the point. We make New Point episodes every Tuesday, Thursday, and now a very special impeachment-themed weekend episode. Check them all out.